Well, it was an exciting day today for miners everywhere in the Star Citizen universe. Today, the MISC Expands Q&A appeared on the Robert Space Industry site. The Q&A is for the upcoming refinery ship that is sure to bring an incredible change to the verse as we know it. Following the concept release of the MISC Expanse, we took your community-voted questions to our designers to provide you with more information on the recently unveiled refinery ship. So let's go ahead and get started. What are the benefits of using a refinery ship compared to the station-based refineries? I think the key takeaway here is that you can bring the refinery to the site or take the refinery somewhere close, that the refining process is much faster, and they're trying to promote coordinated and integrated fleet-based gameplay. And quite honestly, I think that's what most of us are looking for in Star Citizen. There fundamentally isn't a bigger question than what's being asked and answered here, which is how long will refining take using the Expanse compared to station-based refinery? They say the aim is to be relatively fast. It's going to be a skill-based process. If you know the material and you know how to properly process it, it should be much faster than the big refineries. And that's really going to be key, that key uh rhythm between the uh, how quickly a prospector can get out there, prospect, bring it in, have it refined, have your cargo ships lined up. This is really one of the most hallmark uh, reasons why you would purchase the Expanse. The third question, will the Expanse have storage for volatile ore? For example, if I put raw quantanium into the Expanse, will the time to destruction halt? And they say no. The Expanse currently doesn't have safe material storage, so volatility will not be bypassed by storing it on board. However, it should halt the process when the refining process begins. So you're not going to be able to stick it on there, uh, empty, kind of take these bags that are on timer out of the prospector and put those onto the expanse for storage. You're really going to have to have the refining process begin right away. So this next question is kind of a big one. Will there be a mini game for refining like we have for other professions? And if so, can you share any of the details? They don't want to call it a mini game. They think it's a little more complex than that. Uh, and the, but they do have a general idea of what they think the player driven refining process should look like. It is subject to change. And I totally understand that that would absolutely be the case in this particular situation. Um, they say first, you're going to pull the refinery sack in with a tractor beam and attach it to the intake socket. Uh, you're going to analyze the materials and then you're gonna decide what refining process you wanna use. And then you can pick between this predefined method or you can actually take a manual approach, which is gonna include uh, some kind of interactions with grinding, melting, dissolving. Uh, their goal is to allow you to decide how much effort you wanna put in. I'm assuming the more hands-on you are, the faster it will go, but maybe if you make a mistake in that process, it'll, it'll cost you some yield. Um, that sounds all Pretty cool. Uh, the most important thing is, is I wonder how fast you actually can get max yield. I mean, that's going to be an important question, as you can imagine. So, uh, moving on. Will we be able to begin refining and then store the expanse via the ASOP terminal without interrupting the refining process? The short answer is no. Uh, if you store that ship, they're either going to reset the process, some of the materials are going to be wasted, or that's not the way it's going to work. You're not going to be able to start that process and log off. This next question is really exciting. What materials can the Expanse refine? The current aim is to have every raw, unrefined material to be refinable. So all minerals, gases, and metals. And they'd also like to refine gases into fuel. And that really opens up a tremendous amount of questioning, thoughts about exactly how that, well, that's going to work out. I'm really excited about this part. Um, yeah, I just can't can't wait. And here's something else I found really interesting. The next question, is the compatibility between the mole, the gray cat rock, and the drape vulture there between that and the expanse? The expanse is planned to refine the vast majority of output from the vehicles above, so it shouldn't matter where the unrefined material comes from. That's pretty crazy if you think about it. Um, however, they're still looking into the FPS mining and the gray cat rock because they do output gems. And so it is going to be interesting to see how that pans out. Um, that being said, it does sound like, uh, yeah, scrap and all sorts of things are going to be available for refining. Now, all right, the next question, will refining require consumables, fuel, catalyst, reagents? Another really kind of interesting concept. Refining will likely require some use of power, catalysts, and other reagents. 
What's also cool is we plan to have the refinery be able to craft those catalysts and reagents if you have the proper materials on hand. So maybe while you're waiting to do some actual refining of materials, you're building the things that will help you kind of with some of those refining processes. That's a very cool concept um, and I'm interested if maybe there might even be a market for selling some of those catalysts and reagents. Maybe you make different qualities of those things. That's going to be a really cool gameplay and a great idea. All right, moving on. Well, refineries require power from the ship to operate, thus increasing hydrogen fuel consumption when in use. And they say yes. The refinery will be dependent on the ship's power plant. This might even impact your ship's energy balance if you want to run high energy processes in your reactor. You know, another thing that comes to mind is, does that greatly or vastly increase your EM signature? Uh, you know, or one of your signatures. So you really are going to have to tuck that ship away pretty good away from other people or they may be able to find it. Very, very interesting mechanic there. So moving on to question 10, why does the expanse of a single small shield when most ships of this size are better protected? And they really do speak to that kind of in the same vein as the last question. And they say, due to the energy intensive nature of the refinery process, the compromise was only having a single small shield to allow the ship to have full shielding while refinery processes are undertaken. However, the expanse's current armor is above average in its current class. Uh, so that lack of a second shield won't mean it's necessarily weak. Uh, it, it's going to take an enormous amount of power, as you can imagine, to do this refinery, uh, refining process. And so I can ex absolutely understand why you definitely wouldn't be having an enormous amount of shielding on that particular ship when it's really its main focus is industrial. And for question 11, could you explain in broad terms how the SAC system, where the refined material is deposited, will work? And there they speak to the kind of the SAC system that you see on the prospector and the mole, those particular storage units. They say they will expand as they're filled and can be detached once full. Uh, they can be picked up by other ships and moved around, more or less how you would expect that to work in this particular case. Um, but the one cool thing is, is it does seem like uh, because maybe the place where it attaches is going to look the same, that you're going to be able to use both the bags from the prospector and the mole. Uh, and that's, that's pretty cool. This next question is a really big one. When the expanse receives raw ore via container, does it reuse the same container when delivering the refined materials? Are the expanse's eight side saddlebags detachable? And they say yes, we plan to allow players to reuse the sacks that the raw materials were brought in and refill them with refined materials. Current process is described below, but it could differ upon release, and we understand this, but they wanted to say, a prospector delivers you a sack of unrefined materials. At that point, you make a choice. Are you gonna use the intake socket and refine it, or are you gonna store it off to the side? Now, Obviously, if it's on a quantanium timer, you're going to need to put that in the refinery fairly quickly because it's not going to be stable if you set it in a side bag. They go on to say, if you directly refine the material, you can move the material back to the original sack via the intake socket. Um, so the intake socket is going to be, you know, is that also going to be like an, they, they're called the intake socket, but it sounds like it's also going to be what, you, it's like you pull it in and you push it out. I think it's hard to say there. However, you will have to rinse the sack to prevent refined materials from picking up impurities. Very interesting concept. You can also swap the sack at the intake socket for another uh, before the refining is complete. Uh, they do say you need to be careful. The intake socket's very weak and you're, it's not gonna, if you try to go into quantum um, or even travel a little bit, it's not gonna hold on to that particular, uh, the device that's gonna hold it in place and it's gonna pull the materials from. Finally, it says the expansive saddlebags are plan to be detachable so another ship could potentially pick them up and you could see like where the perfect fit of like a hall a comes in here or something along those lines and uh you know grabs that thing potentially a 315p with the tractor beam kind of helps load the hall a boy all that stuff is going to be crazy interesting question 13 is also an important one and uh, this Q&A did, did not disappoint. Uh, what is the total cargo capacity for refined and needing to be refined material? Can it process 64 SCU worth of ore and also have an additional 64 SCU in its saddlebags already refined? And they go on to say, like the prospector and mole, the expanse utilizes the same folding sack design that allows a second set of pods to be stored on board in a compressed state. 
By default, there are eight pods expanded, giving 64 SEU of capacity, and eight pods compress above them, giving an additional 64 SEU of capacity once the initial eight pods are detached. This allows the expanse to stay in place and offload the initial set of pods to a, near, a nearby cargo ship and continue refining a second batch. That's really cool. Question 14 is pretty much straight to the point. Is the expanse able to hold raw ore in waiting beyond six jobs that can run at once? If so, will it automatically start new jobs in waiting without input from the player? They do say we plan to allow you to store some amount of material directly in the reactor or in the attached sacks. However, it will not be refined until you actively start the process. So nothing's gonna be automated. You're not gonna be able to queue them up. You're definitely gonna to have to intervene when one job's done and start the next one. And we're moving on to the last couple questions. This next one is a system being planned to allow players to charge for ore processing, like refueling from the Star Fair. And they say, yep, uh, we're gonna do that selling purchasing system where players are able to sell their unrefined material to the expanse uh, and they'll be able to refine it and set and so on. Uh, it will allow you to add a uh, fee for refining and that type of thing. So yeah, they're definitely gonna have some expanded gameplay based on that uh, refueling concept. I'm sure they're gonna have a neat UI where somebody can pull up, you know, order some uh, processing, that type of thing, or potentially, you know, some kind of a way to just kind of sell it and offload it. Uh, all that stuff is gonna be really, really fun. Um, you know, but slightly dangerous if you think about it, if you're not dealing with somebody you know. <laughs> And the last question is pretty short and sweet. It says the brochure illustration shows pod loading in zero G, but will you also be able to do it in Atmo? And they basically say, yep, the current plan is yes. Uh, and so that'll be interesting. Um, and once again, that kind of really does drive home the question about the EM signature, whether or not you're gonna be able to, you know, how it's, what the flight mechanics are gonna be like, how it's gonna, you know, how it's gonna hover, is it gonna use more hydrogen fuel in Atmo? Uh, these types of things, it's really gonna be a very interesting um, thing to consider. Now, I'd really like to offer some final thoughts. I mean, thinking about this uh, expanse and thinking about the refining process, one of the things that I think is most interesting to me is, what kind of a rhythm are you gonna be able to get into between the prospector and the expanse? And I really think that's gonna be an important thing. Um, as you know, as a miner, sometimes you can sneak out to a planet or a moon or the iron halo and it takes 45 minutes and sometimes you sneak out and you're done, you know, in 15 minutes, you're back with a uni, a, you know, full load, a 32 SCU, um, you know, or, uh, or, or, or even more, uh, you know, depending on how many prospectors you have out there. So my real question for me is going to be, um, you know, really that, what is that time mechanic? You know, what's the best you can crank it down to? It's going to have to be really down around that half hour mark. I mean, that's gonna be somewhere around the time when, you know, if you have a, you get lucky and you get out there and you, you, you can be back sometimes with 32 SCU um, before, you know, before a half hour. Uh, you know, and of course, most of the time it does run a little longer, but, you know, having done a lot of mining in my day, I can tell you that that's, that kind of, that symmetry, that, you know, that, that thing that goes on between them, that rhythm that you get into between, you know, when you're bringing in your loads, whether or not they're done, you know, how, you know, how the cargo ships are kind of able to kind of deal with those things, um, you know, getting that quantanium stable, of course, dealing with the other things, um, it's really going to be very interesting. So I think the Q&A was fantastic. Um, it does, you know, there are some other questions I have uh, about that thing, but I can tell you more or less, I was super excited with the way things went down today. So, um, I thought I would just kind of, you know, do one of these reaction videos very often. So if you have listened up to this point, I really do thank you for that. Uh, you know, I kind of specialize more in the streaming side of things. So, uh, you know, please, uh, you know, if you have any comments, uh, you know, if you have anything that you'd like to say, uh, if you'd like to discuss theorycraft, anything along those lines, please do leave in, you know, your comments below. Uh, please understand that I'm absolutely thrilled to, to chat with you about any of these things. So, uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, have a lovely evening, and we will see you all around the verse.